What is going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Modern Classic Giveaway featuring, at this point, just everyone's lovable little sportster. Today, we've got a real bike in the shop. It's a Dyna. So now all you Dyna boys are gonna shut up. Just kidding, you're gonna watch the whole of this video. Stick around, it's gonna be a good one. So Spite, why do we have this Dyna in the shop today? So unfortunately, this is not a new shop bike. We actually got this on Twisted Road for the day. And it's, you know, another good looking Twisted Road bike. If you wanna go and rent one of these, you click the link down below, get yourself a free day of riding. You can get a Dyna yourself. You can tell us that we're wrong, but we're not gonna be, and you'll know. Exactly, and as you know, this is our giveaway Harley Davidson Sportster 883. We've got tons of really cool things coming for this motorcycle. We're gonna be doing the vaunted 1275 swap onto it. It's gonna be an awesome ripper of a bike. Make sure you get signed up to win this thing. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. But let's take a closer look at the legendary Dyna. Alrighty, so everybody knows about the Dyna, at least in some capacity. You've probably heard the name Dyna when you're talking about Harley Davidson with somebody who really knows about Harley, or at least is very familiar with one model. The Dyna is actually not a kind of motorcycle, it's an entire class of bikes. So you can't just go buy a Dyna, you need to pick one. This actually is the Dyna Street Bob, but they all share the same frame, right? So Harley uses different frames for different classes of motorcycles from their big tours to the little sportsters, and the Dyna is one class. One way you can tell a Dyna apart from one of the more modern soft tail motorcycles is the fact that it actually has twin shocks in the back. The modern soft tails actually only have the one, even though the frames are still very similar and they look very similar. Now, this bike is legendary because of stuff like Sons of Anarchy, the crazy Instagram SoCal boys who are doing massive wheelies on them. Shout out to John's Moto Garage. We made that response video. We see you. Keep ripping those fat wheelies. These, these bikes are very much put on a pedestal in the yes. Harley community. Yes. I mean, at this point, they're growing in popularity, right? We were talking about it before the shoot that, you know, it seems like SoCal Supermoto boys got bored of doing wheelies on those bikes. It's too easy. <laughs> they had to slap on a 670 pound motorcycle to rip fat nooners on. It's unbelievable to see what people can do with these motorcycles, honestly. It's, it's pretty nuts. Yeah, and like you said, this is a 670 pound motorcycle, but it is motivated by a big 1,690 cc engine. It's 103 cubic inches for all of you cruiser boys. And it makes 99 foot pounds of torque. So close to that vaunted triple digit torque spec, but not quite there. Mm -hmm. I believe the, the Busa makes more torque, and so that's all I care about. It's 101, the that's Busa right. does. That's right. So our little Sportster over here is motivated by an 883cc V-twin, very similar to the Dyna, but sort of hit with a shrink ray. Um, it features 54 foot-pounds of torque, so it's a pretty peppy little engine down low, but it doesn't have a whole lot of top end either. The big difference for the Sportster between the Dyna is the weight. It's about 100 pounds less. It's got a much smaller gas tank, too. This is your bop around the town kind of Harley, as I've come to understand it. The big thing we've done on this motorcycle, too, as opposed to the Dyna as well, we've got this thing on updated suspension at the rear and brand new tires. So we're gonna really put it to the test and see if it can actually keep up and handle with something like the Dyna. But Spite, today's video is not a direct comparison, right? Because you can't directly compare a motorcycle that has two times the displacement of the other one, right? Yeah, and this is a point that I really wanna stress today. We are not comparing the 883 to the Dyna Street Bob. What we're comparing is we're comparing the handling characteristics of the Sportster platform versus the Dyna platform. Because when you look at these bikes, they're all the same in their bones, right? The Sportster, all of the Sportsters use the same frame. All of the Dynas use the same frame. So despite the fact that this is making almost half as much power, this thing, they're still very comparable when you eliminate stuff like just Go Juice. And we'll show you when we get out the, on the road that this thing really can boogie. Mm -hmm. It really does rip off the line from what you told me as you come into the shop. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to point out to you is price. As we said, not direct competitors, but the Dyna does come in at around that thirteen thousand five hundred dollar mark. If I got that right, thirteen six nine nine at the showroom, and that's just for Vivid Black 
no ABS, and no security system. Pretty nuts. And then the sports server here is just under $10,000 on the showroom floor. So for just a little bit more money, in my opinion, you could get something like the Dyna if you're looking at that cruiser lineup. So Spite, in your opinion, who would get something like the Dyna? Right, okay, so the Dyna, while it is, you know, affordable when you can pair it to something like the CVOs, it's still a thirteen and a half thousand dollar motorcycle, right? It's a spicy meatball. It's very expensive. We're talking leader bike money for a bike that doesn't make leader bike power. Now, mm -hmm. obviously, sports or Dyna boys, cruiser boys, you, I pat you on the head. We're not comparing it to leader bikes, but you really do have to consider what else you can buy for that kind of money. It's difficult not to look at value for money, right? It's, it's tough. Yeah, exactly. And this motorcycle is really designed for somebody who's perhaps grown out of the Sportster platform and doesn't want to put the effort in to make this bike faster. Because while it is relatively cheap, mm -hmm. you can get a lot of power out of it. You can get Dyna power out of it, but it is a lot of work, despite being mechanically simple. A lot of work. And so the one thing I want to point out as well is we are very quick to note here at AmiNoob that motorcycles are much more than their specs, much more than their price. So the only way to find out whether this bike is any different from that bike is to get them out on the road. All right, everybody, we're out on location now with the Dyna and the Sportster. Mr. Spite over here rode the Dyna in and I rode the Sportster. I've not ridden the Dyna yet, and I'm about to take it out for my first ride and impression. Spite, anything you can tell me about this bike before I head out? The main thing I wanna feel and hear from you is what it feels like to turn the bike in, how, how the weight feels to you, and how just the whole bike, suspension, everything handles mid-corner, I really want to, all I care about is how it feels to turn the bike. All right, let's do it. that's what everybody tells me, is the Dyna handles great and the Sportster sucks. So let's hear your first impressions. Let's see. All right, everybody, taking off on the Harley Dyna. So this is the legendary bike everybody talks about, huh? Let's see how it feels. My initial impression is that um, it's a little funny side to side. So this bike, I just noticed before we took off, has almost the same tire setup as the Sportster. It's got a 100 width at the front, 19 inch. And then at the back, it's got a 160, uh, 17, I believe it is. So kind of a funky setup. Let's see how a speed bump feels on it. Uh, it's not great. <laughs> a little, a little while we had to stand up on the pegs here. The Dyna features some really interesting ergonomics because it's got these risers on it, these T-bars as the Harley boys call them. So it's a little bit unique, but let's feel some of this torque, shall we? Yeah, it definitely has more power than the Sportster, that's for sure. It's a way bigger engine. You'd hope that it has more torque, but I don't really feel like it's a crazy amount of power on this thing, honestly. The thing about the Dyna that surprises me a little bit is that it's it's definitely more playful than I thought it would be, but it's still a big, heavy bike. There's no getting around it. This thing weighs 670 pounds, and it feels every bit of those 670 pounds. But unlike the Hayabusa, which is another very heavy motorcycle that I've ridden around, um, you know, it carries its weight super differently. The center of mass is much lower, which uh, a lot of you might think that that's a, a decent thing, but actually for motorcycles that you want to handle really, really well, you might want to position the engine actually a little bit higher so you get more of a pendulum effect when you swoop over side to side. It makes it a little bit easier to ride. Let's see how it feels grabbing a downshift. Yeah, it definitely's got more balls than the Sportster, that's for sure. This engine is different as well from the Sportster in that it's a twin cam engine. The Sportster's engine is a little more agricultural than this one, let's say. Yeah, you can definitely tell that it's a engine that is in a higher state of tune than the sports you can hear it based on its intake sound alone but i gotta be honest this bike is not fast in any way shape or form i'm pretty sure a modern 650 could absolutely walk all over this thing it doesn't really feel super fast yeah no doubt it's sharper than the sportster but the funny thing that i'm noticing is that it feels so similar to the sportster and i'm a little disappointed because Everyone who rides Dyna and everyone who rides the bigger displacement Harleys has told me, oh, Yammy, you've got to ride the bigger Harleys. They feel so different from the Sportster. It's a totally different experience. And I got to say, between the controls feeling the same, the throttle feeling the same, the handling feeling about the same, the same tires, similar suspension setup, similar geometry on this motorcycle, 
except for the bars here. I gotta say I'm a little disappointed that it just kind of feels like a large Sportster. It really does. Um, Spike told me that as he rolled up to the shop this morning because he was the one that actually went and rented this motorcycle and uh, we were doing the video today. And I just feel like it's, you know, it, it is just kind of a big Sportster. It's not too different. Uh, and honestly, I'm a little disappointed in the controls and the quality of the controls for a bike that's as expensive as this one is. Like, this feels more like a modern motorcycle than the Sportster does, but that doesn't make it great, honestly. It just feels like it's a little bit more up to par than something like the Sportster. It does have a nice intake sound, though, I will say. As you get on the throttle, uh, you can hear that engine open up, and uh, it's definitely satisfying. I would not believe you if you told me this was a 1600cc engine or 1690cc engine. Um, I don't feel like it has a low-down torque that a Busa does at all. I don't feel like it has a low-down torque even of a, an R1 or an MT10. I feel like this really doesn't have the balls. Maybe right there a little bit. But it peters out so fast that I don't really get the sense that this is a fast motorcycle. I don't think it's a fast bike at all, honestly. But hey, it's not supposed to be, right? It's a Harley-Davidson. Now, one thing that I am noticing about this bike that is a bit nuts is, uh, holy moly, it vibrates a lot. You can see in my literal wrist right now, it looks like I'm trying to do that, but I'm actually not. This bike just vibrates so much that uh, it really just does that, and it's kind of ridiculous. I literally feel my teeth chattering out of my head. <laughs> I'm sure that's part of the allure and the appeal, right? One thing I like about these big lumpy engines is you can kind of just you don't really need to add any throttle at all I've got the clutch fully pulled in now and it's still just kind of rolling through which is quite nice you cannot seriously ride the Sportster though and this and tell me that they're completely different motorcycles they're, they're not different motorcycles <laughs> I'm sure the frame is slightly different on this thing I'm sure that you know some things are changed and updated I can tell the engine is in a higher state of tune but I don't really feel like the differences are palpable enough to warrant the uh, sort of admonishment that I've had to endure from Harley Bros about how I'm being unfair to Harley by judging it based on the Sportster. Because this is the real deal, isn't it? This is a 1690cc big bad Harley. This is supposed to be the real deal. And I gotta say, it feels really similar to the Sportster. <laughs> it definitely feels better though, I gotta say. The throttle feels a little bit better. The engine's definitely more willing. It's good things. But I do feel a, a trade-off, though, with this motorcycle. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think that this bike with, uh, you know, its heavier weight and its suspension that's equally as unrefined, it makes it so that it's not something you really want to absolutely rip through your favorite twisty roads or anything like that. It feels honestly pretty composed on the side of the tire. Um, not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. However, the suspension is just too unrefined for me. I mean, mid-corner here, because you have an engine that's really torquey, you know, it kind of does this weird flexy thing, which I don't love. Grabbing more and more brakes doesn't do a damn thing. <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what the appeal is, though. Although, again, I'm not really sure what the appeal is on these bikes. I don't really get a sense that this thing is, you know, massively different from the Sportster. I don't get a sense that it's this really fun, awesome motorcycle. I don't, I mean, it's all right, I guess. For all the Dyna boys out there and the FXDR boys and low rider boys and soft tail boys, all, all you Harley Cruiser boys that ride the real ones, the big ones, uh, if you guys like this kind of stuff, if you do like this, you know, more sporty riding stance that the uh, Dyna can give you, the more torquey engine, that kind of stuff, I really recommend that you try out something like the Diavel, something like the Rocket 3. I mean, those bikes are oodles of fun. They are absolutely silly. Um, I don't really get the sense that the Dyna's a silly motorcycle. It feels pretty buttoned up to me, pretty sensible even. Yeah, I, I would prefer something like this to just be absolutely goon silly. I would also like more forwards on this. I think true forwards on the Dyna makes a lot of sense. I know that a lot of Dyna bros don't like running forwards, but I still think that the Harley Cruiser thing is supposed to be about forwards. Get it over here on the side, huh? Let's see how she does. Oh, 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 scraping. <laughs> I was barely pushing it. I think I started scraping the whole damn bike. 
That was definitely not peg, that was just body. <laughs> oh my god, man. Let's see, more slow speed stuff here. Yeah, the Dyna just kind of lurches along here. It's really interesting. You can kind of just let it lurch through. Just does what it needs to do. Interesting bike. Alrighty, you're back. You you had your maiden ride on a Harley freaking Dyna. A real bike. Was it everything that all of the Dyna bros have been telling you it is? Uh, I guess. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it does not leave a very powerful impression. The thing that honestly surprised me about this bike is how uh, it's like sort of subtle and kind of demure it is. Everyone talks about the Dyna like it's some brawly big bad motorcycle dude this thing's super chill honestly mm -hmm. like uh i've ridden probably dozens of bikes that felt more hair on fire than the dyna so i think you hit the nail on the head when you came in with the bike it literally feels like a big sports um i didn't really get a sense of it being super unique or bespoke which is something that i hear a lot about these bigger harleys people mm -hmm. say you can't even you can't even look at that bike and this bike in the same arena because they're so different i didn't get that sense at all throttle feels exactly the same clamshells are the same, controls feel the same, the suspension feels much like that bike did when it was stock. This bike feels better now that it has this suspension on it. Um, the tires are the same, right? Mm -hmm. I don't feel like there's enough of an appreciable difference to call this motorcycle so different over the Sportster platform for me as someone who is not super familiar with the Harley right. lineup. So I want to follow one thread from a little earlier when you talked about the engine. Did you feel like it was as slow revving and kind of just uh, lackadaisical, low compression, lopey, kind of feel out of this because this is the one that's supposed to go like stink right yeah and i mentioned this on my vlog how this is the twin cam right this mm -hmm. is the higher performance one and you do notice that you notice when you get on the throttle has that nice intake sound it's definitely doing more than that for sure it's a more modern engine this is from uh 1987 yeah. i think way more modern and you can definitely tell however it's nowhere near what other manufacturers are doing <laughs> not even close um i mean not even not even in the same ballpark uh, you think about our, our Panigale we got given away right now, right? I mean, that V-twin versus this V-twin, it's like it's like in another orbit, you know? It's in another galaxy. Yeah. Um, this motorcycle, to me, is, again, if you don't, if you're not familiar with other bikes, it's gonna feel great. Uh, but yeah, for, for my money, I don't see why. I don't get it, and mm -hmm. I, I think that Dyna Bros hype this bike up a lot more than they should, personally. I don't want to be mean, but I don't, yeah, what's what's the hype about, really? I mean, that, that was kind of my sense of it. Now, I really want to get out on the Sportster and feel back-to-back -back yeah. the difference between the Dyna and the Sportster. I'm curious to see what you think about the Sportster after riding this. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's do it. All righty, boyos. It is now time for me to hop back on the Sportster after having ridden the Dyna up here. And the main thing that strikes me uh, looking at both of these bikes is just how much smaller the Sportster is. Now, the Dyna is 670 pounds, which is like 100 pounds more than the Hayabusa. And the Sportster is 550 pounds, which is exactly one Hayabusa. Now, while the Sportster does have the weight of a Busa, it doesn't have the presence of one, right? It, it looks and is a small, compact, heavy motorcycle. And I think that's what I really like about it, honestly. Also, I like the fact that you can start this in first with the clutch pulled in. Dyna's got to be in neutral. Now, as we pull away here on the Sportster, the thing that I immediately get struck by is how this is essentially just a standard motorcycle. You know, it feels like a standard naked, not necessarily sport bike, but sporting motorcycle. It doesn't necessarily feel like a cruiser, save for the fact that my feet are out in front of me. And as a result, chucking this thing into a corner feels like second nature. And as I hit that speed bump, you notice I didn't really slow down, and the suspension just soaks it up. Now that is down to the fact that we did put those progressive 412s on there, which are a good shock. I wouldn't say they're the best, but they are certainly better than what the Dyna has from the factory. And am I missing some of the power of the Dyna as I'm going through these corners? Sure, maybe a little, but... 
you really can't use 100 foot-pounds while you're on a road like this. Instead, what you're using is you're using, you know, your cornering ability to just carry all of the speed through. And honestly, I feel like I can ride the Sportster faster than I could ride a Dyna. Now, sure, I am more experienced on a Sportster than I am on a Dyna. You know, I've, I've ridden this bike a lot. I've ridden a handful of Sportsters in my time. And I've only ridden the one Dyna. But immediately I hop on this thing and I know what it's all about and I know how to ride it. The Dyna is a lot of work. And, you know, again, the, the weight here, the weight is a huge, huge, huge difference, guys. It's a big, big difference. A hundred pounds on a motorcycle is an enormous difference. You know, sure, okay, I probably have like 40 pounds that I could lose, but that 40 pounds that I lose on the Dyna is not going to significantly reduce my weight and increase my cornering ability per se any more than it is on the Sportster and I gotta say while both of these motorcycles are incredibly vibrational I find the vibrations on the Sportster more bearable I don't know if it's you know just the way that it's tuned or the way that the belts work or blah 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 but the Sportster just it feels it feels more pulled together. It feels like it's shaking a lot less. It feels less like a cruiser, honestly. The Dyna is a big ass cruiser. But when you compare the frames, cruiser for cruiser, sure, the Dyna's frame is newer. Sure, people can make the Dyna perform better than the Sportster. Now, as we start going back here, one thing I really want to talk about is the feel that you get from riding the Sportster is different than what you get on a Dyna because of how old school the Sportster is. And I think one of the things that I love so much about it is the engine is older. You know, the Twin Cam is a new-ish engine. You know, it's since been replaced by the Milwaukee 8. But the Evo has so much more character to it than the twin cam does the twin cam is a better engine you know no doubt it's a better engine but i love hearing the valve train on the evo it feels more it feels more classic you know and in a world where harley davidson's are classic motorcycles and and have that look and feel and you know they're trying to be you know a more old school muscle bikey you know let's let's look cool in our leather jackets kind of thing you gotta have the older more goofy engine you know i feel like having the twin cam it almost it almost takes away from the dyna in, in my opinion as, as weird as it sounds because i don't ride these bikes for the performance i just don't and the dyna performs okay it feels fine but there's something about riding a sportster in a more aggressive manner and listening to the valve train work and, and it's like you're sitting on top of a washing machine filled with tambourines it's it's really interesting riding this motorcycle and the Dyna doesn't have that it just it just kind of works and that was my issue with my VFR back in the day it just worked and it it didn't really have the character that I kind of want out of a motorcycle that I'm riding on the daily. And that's one of the things that I really hope we don't lose when we get the 1275 kit in here. I still want to hear the valves clatter. I still want to hear the engine work. I, there's a lot of auditory feedback that you get aside from exhaust on this motorcycle that is so unique to this platform alone. And it's why I still think the Sportster's the only real Harley that you can buy. You know, as much as the Dyna bros like to think that their Dyna's really fast and really well sprung and goes like stink, it's fine. But, dude, this Sportster, it feels so good. But the Sportster's a playful motorcycle. At its heart, it's a playful motorcycle. And the Dyna is not. 
just isn't. Sure, you Dyna Bros can do some crazy stuff with it, and more power to you, but if the Sportster doesn't just want to go out and have fun and party, and sure, maybe it doesn't get there as fast, but I have a bigger smile on my face riding this than I do when I'm on the Dyna. And I feel bad because I know the guy I rented the Dyna from is watching this video probably right now. And I like your bike, man, I really do, but I don't like it more than the Sportster. So my sweet little squid, this video is actually over, but lucky for you, click on this one right here. You can keep watching your sweet Papa Yam delivering you the motorcycle content you've come to know and love. Don't worry, I'll wait. I'll be here waiting for you. You're gonna click on that video.